been been on staff for quite a while now. He's a published poet. He's got a book coming up, don't you? It's out. Autographs, copies. Out. Uh, Noel is um, tonight. He's going to talk about becoming a uh, fictional character himself. He moved to New York a little while back and became a, a character in a play. He's going to talk about that. job before we went to New York at a uh, big public radio station, WNYC, uh, which was a huge uh, coup on some level. I don't, I don't know how that happened. And so it seemed like things were, were going really well. Um, my wife was excited. I wasn't 100% I wasn't thrilled about it, but I had a job. Um, we found a place uh, that was close to the Brooklyn Museum. You know, everything, everything seemed to be great. My wife eventually got a job at the Whitney Museum. It was, uh, it was kind of a dream come true. And uh, right before we moved, I get a phone call from my dear college roommate friend, Kit, who, who says to me, um, he says, I just, uh, I just went to a reading of a play. And he said, you are, uh, you're a character in a play. <laughs> And, uh, and it's gonna and it's gonna be staged here in New York City. And I, I was really confused, and I said, "What are you talking about?" And he said, "It's this group called the Civilians." And, uh, and I said, "I said, oh yeah." I said, "They were they were here in Colorado Springs two years ago, interviewing people uh, for this production that they did called eventually called This Beautiful City." And they interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people. And uh, Kit informed me that I was a major character <laughs> in this play. And uh, the first thing I thought was, I haven't even gotten to New York yet, and I'm already off Broadway. <laughs> I've got a job at <laughs> this huge radio station. I was like, what could go, what could go wrong, right? Um, so we moved to New York. We pack everything we own into the back of this budget truck. And uh, we get there, and um, things start to go wrong <laughs> very quickly. Uh, the neighborhood that we had moved decided to get this uh, nice apartment close to the Brooklyn Museum. It turned out to be Crown Heights, which is what I imagine New York was like, and uh, the Lower East Side was like in 1975. Um, there was no toilet. Um, in the building, there was no stove. <laughs> um, but never mind, it was 97 degrees and humid. We were on the third floor, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, it's, it's New York. You know, we, we were being baptized in New York style. And so, we, you know, things kind of, we kind of get settled in. We find a school for our son. He's not thrilled about it, but he's a sport. Um, we, you know, I get, I get my job. Uh, at WNYC and things kind of start picking up. I get to go downtown to the municipal building every day, which has been in like every every movie about New York. And 
and it's exciting, and you know, uh, it seems like things are gonna gonna kind of sort themselves out. Marina gets her job at the Whitney. Um, we start having you know celebrity sightings. Robert De Niro is behind me in line on the way into the municipal building, and uh, we're walking down the street, and there's Philip Seymour Hoffman, and my son almost hits him in the balls with an umbrella. <laughs> We have, you know, we have a little moment with Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, so, so we've been there. Um, we've been there. I, I think it was um, it was about five months. And has anyone has anyone seen this Charlie Hoffman movie called Synecdoche, New York? Has anyone seen this? Um, so this movie, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, is a uh, it's a pretty dark comedy about a playwright in a small town, the small town of Schenectady, New York, and he is, uh, he's doing local theater, but he's, he wants to do something really important, and uh, his wife is a painter, and she's in the process of leaving him, and, and, I, and I should say that, um, well, I'll, I'll, get to the, I'll get to this later, so it's, it's he, and his wife, his wife basically decides to leave him, then he gets a MacArthur Genius Grant, he decides to do this really big production, and he decides to move, move to New York City, and, um, and it's basically him creating this character of himself for half the movie, and following himself around, trying to figure out how he's going to do this play, while the characters in the play basically go on living his life for him <laughs> in real time. And it's uh, it's 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 a little weird. It's it's a little dark. Um, but my wife, when when this came out, my wife and I said we have to go see this movie because our very first date had been going to see King John Malkovich. Um, when uh, when that came out in 1999, um, we went to Coke. It was great. I was in the throes of love. Too, I remember. <laughs> um, so we this was like a, this was and it came out around the time of our it came out around the time of our 10th anniversary. Um, and, and we went to see this movie, and I, and I thought, this is so, this is so weird. I, I'm, I'm here watching this Charlie Hoffman movie about this guy who moves from a small town to New York to put on this big play. He's got this other self, and you know, there's this other me out there in this play in New York somewhere too. And um, you know, but it's a, it's a dark movie, and, and by the end of the movie, you know, he can't get around. He hasn't, he hasn't gotten around to finally putting on the production. And, and uh, right before he dies, he says. You know, I, I think I think I know how to do the play now, and uh, and that's it. And then it fades to black. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh man, I hope it doesn't work out for me like that. <laughs> um, so meanwhile, uh, things start start to get a little bit worse for us in New York. Um, we're we're out of the house. It's about an hour commute. Um, I was hoping, of course, to go and, and you know, be a writer and, and produce radio and, and do you know get on the air. And, um, and do all these things that one goes to New York to do, um, but I'm I'm basically working I'm working for somebody and I'm, I'm the associate producer on a project uh, in which we have to keep track of these thousands and thousands of of tapes. It was called the Jazz Off Project, and, and some of you DJs probably um, know about W. Eugene Smith, who was this obsessive compulsive documenter of all things in this loft on, on the Avenue of the Americas back in the 1960s. He documented Thelonious Monk uh, playing piano, and he was basically like the he was basically like the the character in this in this uh, Synecdoche, New York movie, where he just couldn't stop documenting life. And, and so we were pouring through all of this stuff. Um, I didn't have time to do my own pieces. I didn't have time to write. Um, my wife, my wife liked her job. Everything was fine, and, and then, um, and then we got bed bugs. <laughs> and uh, and this is uh, this is an experience that I, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemies. Um, it's worse than having a colicky baby. Um, you wake up constantly thinking you're being besieged by these tiny bugs in the middle of the night. I happen to have been allergic to them, which is the only reason we knew we had them. So I'm waking up scratching like every 15 minutes, um, and uh, and then our and then our house got broken into, our apartment got broken into, and we lost our computers, all our photographs, all of our, our things, and things are getting worse. And meanwhile, my friend Kit keeps calling me. His his girlfriend is the 
costume manager for this production of the civilians, <laughs> this beautiful city, and telling, telling me how great the production is going. And I keep thinking, there's this other me out there. <laughs> in New York, in my hometown, Colorado Springs. Um, uh, you know, having this, uh, ex some other alternate uh, experience in my life. Um, and so finally, you know, we, we're, we're not see we don't see our son, he's at school like 12 hours a day, and, and he finally said, forget it, we're gonna, we're gonna leave. And, and I, right as we were about to leave, uh, I get a, I get a, I get a phone call or an email or something, something saying that the play is finally going to debut, and do I want to come see myself in this play? <laughs> And of course I do, of course I'm going to see the play. And, uh, and so I was talking to a producer at the, at the radio station for Studio 360, and I, I was telling him this story, and he was like, oh, that's, he said, that's great. He said, you should, take a, you should take a tape recorder with you and, uh, and do a story on it. And I thought, great, I, I can finally do a story. And I, I kind of wanted my story back from this uh, production <laughs> of this beautiful city. I, 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 need to, I need to sort of take something away with me from New York. And so a bunch of friends of mine and I, right before we, right before we left, we packed, you know, we all got together and rode the subway over and, and went to see this beautiful city. Um, and it was a, it's a fantastic production. And uh, I don't know if any of you got to see it when it was here. And there I was. I was this character. I was a character. Uh, I was sort of you know, a little bit two-dimensional. I was the old journalist. Um, <laughs> played, I was sort of the foil to the uh, to the to the most of the other characters who were evangelical Christians. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it's hard to imagine. <laughs> And uh, it was a strange. And then afterwards, you know, they invited me. They invited me to meet the the guy who played me, and I was going to interview him and do the story. <laughs> and so I go backstage, and uh, he comes out, and you know, my friend Kit was like waiting for a singularity to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so I, you know, I I basically turn on my tape recorder and played the journalist, and I interviewed him about being me, and it was it was really great. He he. Uh, the the character that you know that I was in the play uh, has gay parents and, and lived in Colorado Springs and, and I said so what was that like and he said oh, it was great because you know I I grew up I had gay parents and, and uh, it was really cool and I could really identify with the character and it was it was fun talking to him and I and so I yeah I, I had this great sort of encounter with him and I went back to WNYC and pitched the story to uh, to the Studio 360 and I'm like I don't know it's a uh, Where's the, like, what's the moral? Where, where's the, what's the moral of the story? And I was like, I don't know what the moral of the story, like, what, I, I don't know, it was like this great encounter, and, and, and then, they, and so they, they sort of, they declined it, and I thought, ah, oh, like, all of, like, all this time in New York, and, and they still, like, I can't sort of grab my story back. So, we moved back to Colorado Springs, um, very fortunately get, uh, get installed over there at KRCC, um, and lo and behold, the civilians are going to bring uh, this beautiful city back to Colorado Springs. <laughs> um, and so I'm, I'm going to be a character again, I go back to Colorado Springs. And, uh, and so they, they all come back, they do this sort of pared down production. I keep thinking that I'm going to do this story for radio, I'm, I'm going to produce something, I want to tell my side of the story. Uh, it doesn't have, you know, it just doesn't happen. I, I can't. I can't find my way back into it. It's great to see the play, et cetera, and so on. And so I, I forgot about it for a while. And um, and then Sharon uh, invited us to do this uh, this production or this this uh, <laughs> tell the, to tell these stories. And they're supposed to be about. Right now. And I thought, oh, now's my chance. Now's my chance. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do this story, and I, I think I know just how to tell it. Thank you. <laughs>